Oh, oh, sorry for that mispronunciation. Yeah. No, that's sorry. absolutely fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You can take it away now and present to us your work. Okay, um, I am joined by my colleague, Namakando Montali. Um, my name is Komuloyo Karen Sifuniso, as has already been stated. Um, I am uh, the SADC Region Manager, Operations Manager for Yellow Card Financial. I also get to act as the Zambia Country Manager. And so um, I pretty much run operations within the SADC Region and um, uh, marketing here and there as we are quite a small company that are just growing. We are an American startup that offer uh, cash to crypto um, off ramps and on ramps. I know that's a bit of Greek, but I would definitely, um, you know, definitely simplify uh, the messaging as we go on. So um, today we are going to talk about cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. Um, so I'll just share my screen. Um, I have a presentation that will guide this conversation and I am really thankful to Unza Beka as well as Pesetas for awarding uh, the Yellow Card Zambia team an opportunity to uh, come and share what cryptocurrencies are all about. Um, I think we're living in a very, we're, we're living in a very um, tech forward world. I think everything is, is, is uh, you know, going, everything is becoming tech these days, you know, so we, we have to be relevant. We have to keep up with everything that's happening. And I'm, I'm really excited that I get an opportunity to talk to young people. I got to talk to crypto enthusiasts about cryptocurrencies and what we as Yellow Card uh, have to offer uh, within Zambia and within Africa. Okay, so just a disclaimer before we start. Uh, we are not... We are not a licensed financial advisor. So all the views that I expressed, I intended for educational purposes only. Please, um, I'll just ask everyone who's joining to mute their mics, please. I'm getting some feedback, thank you. Um, yeah, we, we, we are not licensed uh, financial advisors. So if you want to invest into cryptocurrencies or anything of that nature, we advise that you speak to someone who is uh, who is um, licensed. So how can we talk about cryptocurrencies without talking about money? So that's exactly where we're going to start. We are just going to take a trip down memory lane and uh, talk about money. So um, money in the olden days, you know, would draw its value from things that are attractive, you know, things that are aesthetically pleasing things like uh, beauty, things like um, um, how scarce is it? And, and, and so based off that, if, if, if the people in the, olden, in, the olden, um, in the olden days, yeah, in the ancient days, sort of to say, if they would find a precious minerals or let's say salt, cause salt was quite rare back in the day. If they find salt and they discover that it's quite, um, it's, it's not something that is, is available, readily available in many different communities, they, they, decide, they would decide to uh, use that as, as a medium of exchange. They would decide to have that as, as a form of, of money or as a form of um, you know, making payments or settling uh, payments. So we can see here from, from an image that I have, like, you know, beads, we know back in the day, beads were a form of payment, we know, um, you know, we had uh, stones that were quite, they were round and uh, they were smooth. Those were all used as, 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 as a medium of payment or um, as a way of settling uh, any, uh, any bills, sort of to say. So it's actually interesting. If you look at, uh, if you look at the word salary and where it comes from, it actually comes from, it comes from salt because salt was was used to pay uh, the Romans as as a way of um, you know uh, paying them for the work that they have done over a period of time. So uh, having moved from that, we have what is known as the fiat money. So what exactly is this fiat money? The fiat money is the everyday paper or um, um, the traditional money that we know. You know the the kwacha the USD, the Pula, the Zim dollar, 
all those are what we know as fiat um, uh, fiat currencies or fiat money. So this fiat money is usually um, it's it, it's it draws its value from a government who usually declare it as legal tender, and they also get to control its supply. So fiat money, something that's interesting about it is that it's always um, it's always going to be. Um, it's always going to be supplied. It's always going to be in, in supply, uh, you know, at, at, the, at the instruction of a central authority. If the central bank or the government say, hey, we need more money, we need more kwacha uh, in circulation, then they'll definitely put more kwacha in circulation. Um, so this is usually, uh, it, it goes through like the central, there's a hierarchy, yeah? There's the central bank and then the central bank, once they issue that, we have the commercial banks and then from the commercial banks we have the people as well as businesses who get to uh, utilize this money in ways of you know they lend it uh, and then we pay it back uh, with an interest but we also use it for our day-to-day -day expenses you know to pay for commodities um, and things like that and so on so now bitcoin bitcoin uh we talk about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. So Bitcoin uh, was created by uh, a pseudonymous uh, individual or persons by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto. The reasons why I say uh, a person or persons is because it's not really known if it's one individual who created Bitcoin or it's several different people who uh, created Bitcoin. They've decided to remain anonymous um uh, for one reason or the other so they they published what is called as a white paper which simply has the instructions of how bitcoin was to work so that is back then how bitcoin was to work um and the flow of bitcoin and how exactly it would operate on this technology called the blockchain so it's actually estimated that this person satoshi nakamoto holds at least 1 million BTC or more. So you can imagine today Bitcoin, I think for the last time I checked, it was somewhere at, um, this morning when I checked it, it was at 41,000 US dollars. So you can imagine this person holds at least uh, plus or minus 1 million BTC. So that by by 41 million US dollars, it's, I mean 41,000 US dollars, it's, it's quite a lot. Um, so the reason why this, this, this Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin was because he was not necessarily a fan of the central bank, uh, you know, how the central bank functions, um, the secrecy part of the, of the central bank. So he decided to build something that is going to give people more access to privacy rather than secrecy. So what exactly do we mean by this privacy and secrecy? When we, we talk about, um, when we talk about privacy, um, it's, it's something that we're going to explain down the line, but I think an example I can give is, I can show you transactions that are happening in yellow card, right? But what I decide to keep from you are the names or the, the, the specific identity uh, of who holds what or who's transacting what within the yellow card platform. So that's privacy, yeah? And then when it comes to secrecy, it's me absolutely being closed to not wanting to show you anything, any form of transaction. You, the only information that you know is that there's a transaction that is happening on the yellow card, but you have no record of how those transactions are moving and you don't know anyone who's making, um, you, don't, you don't have specific identities to hold to those uh, transactions that are being made. So that's the, um, that's the privacy and secrecy uh, part. And so this is something that, uh, you know, Satoshi was not really a fan of. And he said, hey, let's build something that is uh, focused on encryption, uh, an encryption focused uh, currency that will be publicly open. People will be able to track transactions. They'll, they'll be able to see, you know, if, uh, if, if this transaction goes to this person, how much exactly do they hold in their wallet and so on and so forth. So Bitcoin is quite interesting because you can actually tell, like, the, you can tell that this wallet, of course, you can't tell identities of a person owning, um, owning a, a, a specific address, like, okay, this, this, this uh, belongs to Karen, you can't tell that. You can only tell like, okay, this wallet holds at least maybe two Bitcoin, or it holds one uh, less than one Bitcoin and things like that and so on. All right, yeah, so you can see here, so that's just my slides on how uh, the, this, this, this right here, the Bitcoin, 
um, I'll just minimize this. So the, the Bitcoin Genesis block. So this one here is the first ever block that was mined on the blockchain. Um, we'll get into that later on. And you, uh, my colleague Namakando will be able to explain uh, a bit more about blockchain and how it works. So what exactly is cryptocurrency? We've given, uh, we've given a historical uh, background um, of, of Satoshi and the reasons for him creating uh, this virtual currency. So cryptocurrency is uh, a digital or virtual. Um, it's, it's a virtual currency, uh, only available in digital form. And it is secured by what is known as cryptography. So cryptography here uh, you know, is, 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 is a mix uh, of, of encryption and, uh, and, and currency, well, cryptocurrency as a mix of cryptography and currency. So cri crypto cryptography in itself is more so of an encryption. Um, you know, like we stated earlier, no, no specific identities. Just like when you are doing your WhatsApp to WhatsApp call, there's always that, there's always a, a text that is written that, you know, this is end to end in, in, encryption. That means that if, in as much as they are collecting data from you in terms of who, you, um, in terms of messages and things like that, they can't really tell who exactly it, that uh, specific message is for because it's, it's, it's protected by this encryption. And that's exactly how cryptocurrency um, you know, is protected using this, using this technology. So a cryptocurrency unit such as Bitcoin or Ether, which is Ethereum, um, is a digital token that is created from code using an encrypted string of data blocks known as the blockchain. So there's a block like, like I, I, I showed you earlier, you know, there was a Genesis block. So that block holds information of the first ever cryptocurrency that has been created. And it's distributed among us everyone who is an active participant in, 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 in that blockchain world. And so if, if I as Karen decide to bring in Namakando, who's my colleague, and I send him cryptocurrency, then he too gets to have a record of all the transactions that have, have ever happened. And actually that's an easy way of you tracking how much a person owns in Bitcoin. If they share, you know, they share a BTC with you, you can see it's, it's not good, but you know, we can share some tips. You, see, you send it to, to, if I send it to Namakando, uh, you know, then I'm like, oh, okay, I'm curious. I want to see how much Bitcoin Namakando holds. So I can easily go on the blockchain, just plug in Namakando's address and I'll be able to see like, okay, this is how much, um, you know, Namakando has. But of course I won't be able to get access um, to, that, uh, to that specific, um, to that specific uh, wallet. So, Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency, um, and there are other cryptocurrencies. There's Ethereum, Neon, Ripple, there's Litecoin, there's Dogecoin, the famous Dogecoin, which was built as a joke, but it's actually become a real cryptocurrency now. So there, there are many others. Uh, even you can create your own cryptocurrency. It hasn't become so complex, but it's all about the adoption. Uh, people utilizing the cryptocurrencies um, you know, that are being created randomly right now. No, we're seeing more of a use of uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum because they have actual value that, um, you know, that people are, are using or that people are, are seeing beneficial results. Uh, and also they have real life um, application, you know, unlike some, some of the coins, some of the coins, you just hold them when they make a bit of money you withdraw them and things like that. But Bitcoin and Ethereum have actual value that can be utilized uh, across uh, the globe. So there are all digital, uh, these are all digital assets that are designed to work as a medium of exchange, which is similar to money. Um, that, use, uh, that use cryptography to secure its transaction, control of units and verify transactions. So, uh, a medium of exchange, a medium of exchange is usually something that two or more people agree to utilize, right? So if, if I meet someone and I've got Bitcoin, I meet someone in Zambia, hey, let's, let, me, let me just um, um, differentiate or just kind of clarify this. So medium of exchange is different from legal tender. So legal tender uh, usually gains its authority from a, a, a central authority. So the central bank, the, the, um, the government would usually issue a note, would usually issue kwacha. 
And we would accept kwacha to be valuable because it's been issued by our government and, and our central bank. And so we have no choice but to actually use it for transactions. And this is why it's written somewhere there that I'll pay the bearer uh, on demand because you are, you are obligated to utilize that as you know, the medium of exchange. So for me, as someone who holds Bitcoin, I meet someone else who holds Bitcoin and we say, boy, I want to buy to my socks, but I don't have Kwacha. Can I just send you Bitcoin? So we have agreed to use a Bitcoin as a medium of exchange, yeah? So I send this person Bitcoin and they give me socks in exchange. The exchange has happened. So it's, it's pretty much similar to money in that sense. And it's, it's secured by, by, by the cryptography, um, which is also what gets to track you know, the transactions, but also, it's also it also gets to control the supply of these units. Um, what do we mean by that? Uh, cryptocurrency, unlike Bitcoin, like I mentioned, I mean, um, cryptocurrency, unlike fiat currency, like I mentioned earlier, is limited in supply. So we know for sure that there'll only ever be 21 million Bitcoin in supply. Whereas fiat currency, kwacha, we don't know. We will always be, there'll always be kwacha in supply. There'll always be USD um, you know, in, in supply because our, 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 central, our central authority, our governments can always uh, issue instruction for money to be to be printed whereas cryptocurrencies we know that it's definite uh you know if they say there'll be 21 million then there will definitely be 21 million and so it's also something that is used to verify transactions what do we mean by this um of course when we are sending money using the traditional methods if i'm sending money to iron uh and i use the bank what we do is we go through a middleman right who is the bank, the bank is the intermediary. So they get to, to process that transaction and they send it to Aaron. Whereas when it comes to, um, so just, just I'll just move back to the same transaction that I'm making with Aaron, the Kwacha uh, transaction. So if I'm sending that transaction to him, the Kwacha, I'm sending Kwacha transaction to him, I get to pay a certain fee to Aaron, right? I mean, to the bank, I get to pay a certain fee to the bank. And that is their reward for helping us facilitate this transaction. And the same applies also on the blockchain. If I'm sending a Bitcoin to Aaron, there's, there's, there's a Bitcoin fee, right? There's gas that has to be paid because there are miners that are on the blockchain, um, you know, verifying transactions. So once they verify these transactions, they get rewards based off that minor fee that we pay. They, there's, um, their rewards, they are rewarded in, in a form of Bitcoin. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, we'll talk about it as, as we go on how you know, the rewards work and how much they get um, and so on and so forth. So here we just, uh, this is something that I, I, have, uh, I, I touched on earlier, but we're just going to go through them real quick. So some of the similarities, uh, cryptocurrency versus money. So both of them are store value. We can't keep money in the form of, let's see, today was the common way of keeping money. Um, or storing value, sorry. How do we store value? Okay, you hold your cows, you hold your, you hold your maize. At the end of the day, you want to convert that into some form of uh, pepper money, right? And then that money will go to the bank. And so that will be you uh, having your value stored as kwacha or as fiat. And then when it comes to Bitcoin, you would obviously, if you sell your maze and you, you, you have your quite shy in exchange and you say, hey, I want to try out Bitcoin. You decide to convert your Bitcoin. You go to um, a crypto, to a, a cash to crypto off ramp like ourselves an exchange for cryptocurrency. You come to us, you give us Quacha and we give you cryptocurrency in exchange and you store, um, you store your value in Bitcoin. So value is, 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 is determined by supply, uh, similar factors such as supply and demand on both ends. The higher the supply, we know economic students, the higher the supply, the lower the demand. The, the, the lower the supply, the higher the demand. It pretty much works, um, you know, the, the, same, the same concept applies. 
Um, so it's also used as a medium of exchange. Like I said, if two people agree, they can use it to trade. Um, and then it, the value also varies from time to time. The way the quarter value fluctuates, like it's doing now against the USD, is the same way that cryptocurrency fluctuates. The only difference is that cryptocurrency is extremely volatile. It can easily pick up. It will wake up one day and it goes from 40 to 60,000 US dollars. It can do the same tomorrow wakes up from 60 to one US dollars. That's something that you have to keep in mind. It's uh, whereas um, Quacha or fiat currencies are a lot, uh, are a lot more stable compared, to, um, compared to, to cryptocurrencies. So the differences, um, you know, real money is issued by the central bank unlike virtual money. Real money is physical, cryptocurrency is not. Real money is legal tender, cryptocurrency is not. Cryptocurrency has a capped supply, like I said, only 21 million BTC to be in supply, whereas real money does not. We can always print more. All right, um, uh, Namakando will take it from here. He will take us through the blockchain process. Namakando, over to you. Hi guys. Um... Namakando here from Yellow Guide Financial. Um, so I, I hope anyone, everyone can hear me. Can I just get some feedback on that? Am I, am I audible enough? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Okay, well, Karin has, uh, has talked a lot about, you know, uh, blockchain and crypto. So I'll just take it up from, um, I need to share my, oh, okay. We'll share the screen that Karin is putting up here. Uh, so, um, so Bitcoin is private, right? So we're, we're starting to get into the cryptographic space of it, like what happens behind the scene. Uh, so um, cryptography is the art of making and breaking codes. Uh, so the transparency of, uh, sorry. This. So the privacy and security of Bitcoin is achieved through cryptography. Um, and so what this is, is that, uh, for, for transactions or data transmission to be safe on the internet, it has to be sent in an encrypted format as opposed to plain text. So if you see just next to here where it's written cryptography, the art of making and breaking codes, you can see there's, there's this uh, a wheel spinning. So data will have to be run through an algorithm uh, and it will be hashed and scrambled. Like if you see the, key, the, uh, the picture below. So you have data, there's a public key which will encrypt the data, which means it will be scrambled. And to, to view this data back to its origin in, in its original state, it has to be decrypted by a private key. So let me just explain what the pi uh, public and private key are. So um, these are cryptographic signatures. So your private key is your secret identity code to access your wallet, right? Um, so uh, Bitcoin, uses several cryptographic methods and one of them is used to generate uh, a public and private key pair which are these two that you can see here so when you sign up with a wallet for instance yellow card you create an address on the blockchain and when this happens two keys are generated a private key and a public key uh and, and the corresponding pub, uh, public key i mean so um what the public key is, is this is essentially more like an account number. You think of it like your account number, right? So it's public in the sense that um, anyone can view it. Anyone who wants to send you money to this account can send money. And, uh, and, and so where the private key comes in is that uh, the private key is the only is the only means of extracting whatever is in this account. It's the only means that you can use to, to access whatever is in this account is the private key. So your private key, you think about your private key as a PIN code to an account. That's why it's private. No one ever shares the PIN to anybody. So that's, uh, that's what cryptography is here. So uh, the next point says uh, the keys are cool. Keys protect your identity. Karen, can you just use your slide a bit? Karen, are you there? Hello? 
Yes, I'm here. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, so um, I did read some. Okay, so uh, please sorry, more money. Identity. Could you please uh, mute your mic? More money. Clara Mwape, could you please my, mute your mic? Yeah, we Oh, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, allow me to continue. Okay. Um, so, so Bitcoin is transparent. So what we mean by this is, uh, uh, I think Karen explained earlier that uh, the blockchain is a form, uh, this is a, a database where all transactions that occur to do with cryptocurrency are recorded, right? So this is just like, uh, it's, a, it's a public ledger where every transaction can be seen by everyone. So um, Bitcoin existence is enabled by the blockchain technology. So blockchain is a decentralized uh, peer-to-peer -peer network where all transactions happen on the blockchain and are recorded. Um, so this synchronized global ledger is shared among thousands of computers. So it can never be altered, right? So the blockchain, as you can see these things flashing, like whatever transaction happens, let's say from, from one, from one uh, so each blue, uh, each blue dot on the screen represents uh, a computer in this blockchain. So if a transaction occurs, it will be duplicated and replicated across all the other uh, peers in this network. Uh, excuse and me, everyone. Excuse me, Clara. Yes. Please turn off your mic. As well as Namakando. Namakando is the person speaking. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so where was I? So um okay, so this the uh so the blockchain is a synchronized global ledger and it is shared among thousands of computers. As you can see, every every dot on the screen is a computer in this blockchain. And so every transaction is recorded and replicated on all the computers. So this is uh, this is what makes uh, this transparent because every transaction can be seen by everyone on the blockchain. Uh, so the next uh, the next thing here says uh, the pub, uh, keys keep it private. Uh, so public keys identify a user, but don't give away their identity. So what this means is, uh, when people make transactions using Bitcoin, the wallet address involved has uh, have no visible identifier and personal information cannot be linked to them. When, whenever a transaction goes on the blockchain, all you get to see is an account, uh, an account number per se. So that's that's the only thing that you can say. Oh, okay. So this this transaction did happen at what time? So these transactions can be tracked on the blockchain. They're transparent and they show everything that transpired except for my personal information, like my names, where I live and whatnot. So you can do transactions from everywhere, in, anywhere in the world. You won't be charged and stuff like that. So, um, so every transaction needs proof. Uh, so new Bitcoin comes from mining and this payment, this is payment for computers, breaking code to prove trades. Uh, so what this means is uh, for transactions to be added on the blockchain, their legitimacy has to be proved. That otherwise, there would be fraud on the blockchain and it wouldn't work. So proof of work simply um, stops fabrication of Bitcoins. Like you cannot send one Bitcoin twice, you know, where you can, you can uh, that means you're, you're, you're practicing fraud, right? Like you send, you send me money and you send the same amount to somebody. So these things have to be proved and, uh, and uh, acknowledged by every, every peer on the network. Uh, so, so this mechanism of proofing slows down how new blocks are added because to, to, to compute a proof, it takes about 10 minutes of a computer to, to run through certain computation and prove that a, a transaction is legit. And if you tamper with one block, you need to recalculate the proof for all the blocks that have been that have been done. So this this uh, brings about security. Uh, Karen, you can move to the next slide. Okay. Okay. So um, oh, just go back. Go back one two steps. 
Yeah, here. Uh, so Bitcoin is immutable. It is impossible for any entity, for example, a government or corporation to manipulate, replace, or falsify data stored on the network. Uh, so what this means is uh, immutable. The word simply means something cannot be replicated, right? So this is the first rule of Bitcoin where no one can ever change what has been recorded on the blockchain or spend the same coin twice, as I said. Um, so this is uh, a form of uh, consensorship resistance and it's critical for, for the use of Bitcoin. So when a new block is created, it is sent to everyone. If you can see this animation where there's, there's, there's transactions flying around to all the screens. So whenever a new block is created, it is sent to everyone on the network and each node then verifies the block to make sure that it hasn't been tempered with. So this block after verification can be added to the blockchain. So, um, so immutability, so just go down to the next slide. Um, so each block of information, such as the facts of the transaction or everything that occurs uh, has to be proven by a hash. And the hash is what identifies a block. As you can see, these blocks being added. So every time a block is being created through transactions that occur, um, there's a cryptographic formula that is run and it creates a hash, which is like a fingerprint which identifies a block. So this block cannot be altered by any means. As you can see, they are being added almost immediately every time transactions occur. And so if you are, if you are to break one of these blocks to try and hack what's in the block, you would have to do this for every new block that is added. And you have to do it across all the computers, the thousands of computers that are in this blockchain. So, it's practically impossible to do that within seconds, obviously, because you cannot alter these, these formulas on thousands of them. So it's, it's really immutable to, to replicate Bitcoin and, and the like. So uh, we can move to the next slide. Um, so Bitcoin supply is fixed. Uh, Bitcoin supply is regulated with a decreasing supply algorithm. This means that the creation of new Bitcoin gets harder and harder as time goes on so that the total supply of Bitcoin will never exceed 21 million. I think Karen mentioned something on this. Uh, so this, this just goes by design. Like, as you can see, it is regulated by an algorithm. This is just how the rules of the Bitcoin blockchain were written by the creators. So only 21 million Bitcoin will ever be in existence. And the only way new Bitcoin are obtained is when new blocks are added to the blockchain through mining. Um, so, uh, of course, this is not similar to traditional mining as we know it. Uh, so, uh, I'll go on to further explain how this number, this 21 million, won't be exceeded, right? So, miners get rewards every time they, they process uh, a transaction. So, um, so, every four years, Bitcoin rewards to miners are reduced by half. Uh, so, the mining rewards, when the first Bitcoin blockchain was first created a couple of years ago was 50 bitcoins every 10 minutes so after four years this reward was halved to 25 bitcoins and every 10 uh, for every 10 minutes you get 25 bitcoins for mining so four years later it was halved again to 12.5 bitcoins every 10 minutes per transaction so we are currently at 6.25 bitcoin for every transaction that has been completed on the blockchain and so it is predicted that the final Bitcoin that will ever be mined uh, will, will, will be around, I think, 20, 2140, the year 2140 is the time that will reach close to 21 million Bitcoin. So you can imagine we're still going a long way with Bitcoin. It's here to stay. So uh, we can go to the next slide. Okay, so how does cryptocurrency work? Um, so cryptocurrency basically works in, in, a, in a three layer hierarchy. Uh, so the first is uh, the, the creation, which, which, which stems at the top. Uh, this is basically the people who created crypto. Let's say for instance, Bitcoin, which was created by Satoshi. Um, so these guys are, are basically make the rules 
and uh, and and decide how the blockchain will work will work before we adopt the blockchain. So the second level is is the people who engage in the business of exchanging virtual currency for real money or other virtual currencies. Uh, this can be administered or affiliated, non-affiliated or third party. So this second level here, the exchange is a platform like uh, Yellow Card, which is us, where we give you a wallet. And uh, in this wallet, you can use your, your local currency, like your Quacha, to purchase Bitcoins and, uh, and other cryptocurrencies. So on the third level, you have the person, which is me and you. And so here, we can obtain currencies and use them in, in the real world, you know. Anything that you can use with your money, whatever you can think of doing with your money, you can do with your with your virtual currency. So um, uh, as far as my presentation, I'll end here as Karen is going to take over the rest of the, of the presentation. So Karen. Thank you so much, Namakando. So, uh... We're just going to look at opportunities. So what opportunities are there in cryptocurrencies? Um, for some reason, okay. So what opportunities does it present? Okay, um, just going to do this. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so here we're looking at um, the costs or the fees that are affiliated with uh, sending uh, money to different individuals, as well as things like remittances. Um, Africa is one of the largest remittance receiver um, across the globe. Um, sending money to Africa is quite high. Um, a lot of people that are using the Bitcoin channel have found it favorable because of the low fees, the low transaction fees that are, um, that are associated with, with, uh, with Bitcoin. There's also no intermediary. So there are no central banks. You can't, you don't have to go to, um, you don't have to go to a bank in order for you to be able to send funds to someone. Um, that usually that process would take, if it's locally, it would take up to 24 hours, right? Um, if you're sending outside the country, it would take even up to a week sending money. But right. uh, with cryptocurrency, you can send within five minutes. You know, it's with your sister in the UK. Or it's, it's, it's from your sister who's in India to you here in, in Zambia. Uh, we know one person who has who has a brother. Sorry for disturbing you, Karen. Let me just yes. tell someone to mute their mic. Jennifer, okay. would you please mute your mic as you're entering the meeting? Jennifer K, thank you very much. You may continue, Karen. Sorry for that. Okay, yes. So, like I mentioned, um, we, we, we have someone who has uh, um, a younger brother in, in India. He's, he's there for studies. Um, and they usually get to send money to him. So, they, they've been using the yellow card platform, you know, to send money to him. They've opened an account and it's quite easy. It's quite cheap. It's easy for them to maintain their wallet. And if they need someone to talk to about cryptocurrencies, at least they have representatives within the country that they can always, um, they can always uh, reach out to. The user autonomy, you know, you get to be in sole control of, 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 of your, your account. You know, it's it's not like um, you your information is being distributed or shared with anyone, other than the, um, the, the 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 transactions that are being recorded on the blockchain, which are encrypted. Really, no one gets to know who exactly you are, um, and and why you are sending those funds. Um, there's also that peer to peer focus. So this this autonomy actually it, it, it speaks to you know that that um, privacy element. You know, with banks, <laughs> our information is out there. You can easily get, uh, you can easily get, um, you can easily get hacked. You know, your information can easily be tracked and things like that. If 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 a hacker hacked into the the banking system, then that's it. Everyone's information is made public. But with cryptocurrency, with 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 blockchain, there's nothing like that. You know, it, like 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 Namakando mentioned, 
all transactions are distributed across everyone who's ever participated in 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 um in the blockchain space. So if you want to hack into the blockchain system, you have to hack each and every computer that has ever each and every computer, each and every phone that has ever been a part of um you know the blockchain space. So this is this is impossible. Then you would have to go to each and every person on this earth that has ever done that. So there's also a peer-to-peer -peer focus, which means I can easily send money to someone. Like there's no need for me to, you know, to go through an intermediary, like we've we've already mentioned. Um, there are people whom I know who buy Bitcoin from us at a lower cost. Sorry, there's someone who hasn't muted their mic. Can you just mute their mic, please. Like you're going upstairs or something. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So there's the peer-to-peer -peer focus. Um, I know someone in 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 um, in Zambia who buys cryptocurrency or Bitcoin from Ask Yellow Card at a cheaper fee, and then they resell it to uh, to people to people outside for a higher fee. So it has become like a stream of income for a lot of Zambians, and you know. Um, people are making a living out of this so it's also a universal currency that's that the beauty of it. if you have one bitcoin in zambia you're rest assured that that one bitcoin will be one bitcoin when you go to the us so it acts as an equalizer yeah um and this is why there has been a lot of um advocacy in terms of you know a lot of lower income economies have to adopt cryptocurrencies because in the near future, you know, as cryptocurrency, in as much as it is volatile, um, we see that trend um, decreasing over time. Yeah, in the sense that if it dropped back back in the day, if it dropped from like, um, I'll give an example, like what happened a few years back, uh, Bitcoin went up to twenty thousand, and then it dropped somewhere four thousand, um, and then a couple months later, it goes up, or a couple year let one year later. It goes up, it goes as high as 64,000 and then it drops down to 34 US dollars. There's obviously a lot of a beneficial elements that it has to be for an economy to adopt that, or even for us as individuals. Um, sorry, the person who is someone who's walking, please mute your mic. You are walking, going somewhere. Astra and Paxina, may you please mute your mic? Thank you. All right. And continue. All right. Thank you so much. So there's also the security and a speed aspect. So it's a, it's very secure. Um, you know, it's it's quite uh, quick when you're sending funds. Like I mentioned, you know that that young man who's in India, his family is able to get money to him if he, when he says, "Hey, I'm out of food. I need I need food. I need money for food." They send him Bitcoin within an hour. And he's able to, you know, meet his his needs. It's also decentralized, and a lot of people love this idea of decentralization because it's putting power back into the people's hands. And I know it's 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 somewhat like a democracy in a way, uh, you know, power to the people. But anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. But um, you know, it's it's decentralized, so you know, everyone gets to have a say. Everyone gets to. Uh, if you are a participant, then you have to agree. There's that consensus, um, you know, when it comes to cryptocurrency, all decisions that are made have to be accepted by uh, every participant on the blockchain. So it's also easy to use as compared to traditional money transfers. If you have Bitcoin, all you need, um, if I have Bitcoin and I want to send it to Nelly, I'll just ask Nelly, hey, Nelly, send me your, um, your address on WhatsApp. She sends me her address on WhatsApp. I copy paste it, uh, and then I paste it on 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 um on in my wallet. I enter the amount of Bitcoin that I want to send her. If it's a hundred USD, I enter hundred USD. If it's fifty kwacha, I enter fifty kwacha, and she's able to send it. Um, I'm able to send it to her. Um, you know, with 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 so much ease. Uh, whereas when you go to the bank, first you have to stand in the line and then you have to wait for uh, this one person who will attend to you. You have to sign so many documents and send and all that. So there's a lot of uh, flexibility and a lot of ease when it comes to the use of uh, you know, cryptocurrencies. 
And then the huge upside uh, is that, you know, the use of it as, as a potential investment medium. You can imagine in, in, in 2013, BTC was at 5,000 US dollars. And somewhere, if you bought BTC at 5,000 US dollars in 2013, that 5,000 by 2018 would be 2.5 million US dollars. And we're seeing this, we're seeing more and more of this even within the country. When you get to monitor the trends, we have people who have joined Bitcoin or who joined Bitcoin when it was a lot cheaper, when it was 2000 and it went up to 64,000 and they would come to an exchange like us and they would say, hey, I want to sell my Bitcoin because I want to buy land or because I want to buy a car or whatever, you know, whatever, um, expense that they have or something that they want to buy and so this is this is um this is definitely something that a lot of people are, dri are, are driven by when it comes to cryptocurrency sadly it's also the point at which uh they can easily get scammed and we shall talk about that as we go on okay so now uh we talk about what an exchange is yellow card um, so like I mentioned uh, in the beginning, yellow card is a crypto, a cash to crypto uh, on ramp and off ramp. So let me decrypt that as well. <laughs> I am also going to break down those codes. Um, so cryptocurrency is a centralized component of the decentralized economy. That is a bit more Greek as well. So what exactly is this? So cryptocurrency in itself can never really be regulated. Yeah, but the players who are in cryptocurrency can be regulated. So we as, 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 as individuals or we as companies who, are, who have taken up, um, you know, the, the, the offering these services of people being able to um, convert crypto to cash and vice versa, we have acted as a medium of, um, as a medium, a channel of communication or a channel of interaction between an individual or individuals that are interested in buying cryptocurrency and the blockchain. So we get to offer uh, crypto in exchange for cash and uh, we, 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 we buy crypto uh, in exchange for Quacha. So that's exactly what we do. Uh, in a nutshell, if I can break it down further, we act as a bureau for cryptocurrency. You want one Bitcoin, come to us. We sell you one Bitcoin, you give us Quacha. You want to sell your one Bitcoin, come to us. You give us your one Bitcoin, we give you Quacha equivalent of one Bitcoin. That is exactly what Yellow Card does. So we allow users to buy, sell, swap, and stack cryptocurrencies. So this makes money from um, transaction fees. We make money, sorry. We make money from transaction fees as well as rates. So when, when the rate is at 30, 31, like today it was at 41 in the morning. I know it's dropped down slightly to somewhere 48 right now. So um, 40,800, so yeah, that's, that's the rate is at somewhere there right now. Um, for us, we get to add a little bit, um, a little bit of kwacha to that or a little bit of USD to that. And that's how we make our money. But also when we are sending you, we are sending you, um, we're sending you Quacha when you sell us your Bitcoin. There's a fee involved. So those, those, those are the different ways that we get to make uh, money as Yellow Card. So we, we simply act as a bridge, uh, you know, be between traditional finance and cryptocurrencies. Of course, we, you know, we have to factor in things like KYC, which is uh, know your customer, um, anti-money laundering. It's quite huge in the cryptocurrency industry. You know, it's being used for terrorism, um, terrorism financing and things like that, uh, money laundering, uh, whatnot. Um, there's, so many, there's so much crime that is associated uh, with cryptocurrencies, just like there's so much crime associated with traditional finance. So for us to come and be players, uh, you know, and give this interaction between traditional and non-traditional uh, finance, we somewhat try and uh, break break uh, you know these uh, limitations that are there using KYC as well as other policies that we implement. So we also provide a safe way to buy with local currency uh, using cash, mobile money, and bank transfers. In pretty much each and every market, we're in eleven African countries. So in every market, we try by all means to localize um, 
um, the, the, the brand and localize the product that we are offering or the services that we are offering. Of course, the product remains the same. Um, it, it cuts across the globe, uh, but you know the services that we offer, we try by all means to localize them. And this is why um, you know, we, 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 we ensure that we have local personnel in that market who study the market and they get to understand it and deliver it to the people. Um, like I mentioned earlier, please, we, this is not an investment too. We are also not an investment company. I know there was a little bit of messaging of investments and whatnot. We are not an investment company. We are simply a platform for transaction. So we buy and sell and swap cryptocurrencies. That's the only thing we do. If you want to make investments, please talk to someone who is a financial, a, a licensed financial advisor, and they'll be able to assist you through that. So why exactly are exchanges important? So exchanges are important because, you know, um, they give an opportunity for accountability, yeah? Um, like I mentioned earlier, cryptocurrencies in themselves cannot be regulated because they are created to be decentralized. And that is how they operate. But once you bring in an exchange, then you give, um, we give in that, um, that centralized, uh, we give that centralized firm where, you know, it's easy for government and, and other regulators to be able to draw up policy um, governing, govern uh, the, the, the activity, uh, crypto activity within that particular jurisdiction. It's also a safe and secure way to acquire or sell cryptocurrency. I think in the in, in previously, before there was any exchange, any crypto exchange in the country, um, I was able, I've, I've, I, there's one person here actually who's, um, whom I've seen, who's one of the people that I've spoken to, um, Daniel. And you know, when you talk to some, some people and you ask them, how exactly were you able to buy crypto? They'll tell you, oh, we had to buy from South Africa. We had to buy, you know, there were different, uh, different um, places, uh, different sources of cryptocurrencies that people had to buy. And the prices were quite ridiculous for people to acquire this cryptocurrency. But for an exchange, we offer this safe and secure way for people to be able to sell and buy cryptocurrency. So there's also that direct relationship with personal banking. We get to, you know, conversate with them and um, it's, it's quite hard due to lack of regulation in, in so many markets. But I think um, what helps us is that we, we ensure that, um, you know, we are KYC according to uh, what has been put in place by regulation or by the regulators. Um, we also follow the FIC uh, regulation. We ensure that we follow all that. And so that also helps, uh, you know, build that relationship. And also transactions are in local currency. That's a plus. You don't have to you don't have to buy a US dollar in order for you to, to be able to buy cryptocurrency. You can buy it using 20 kwacha worth of, um, you can buy using your 20 kwacha. You say, ah, today I'm not going to buy that kamosi. I'm just going to keep it and then I'm going to buy cryptocurrency. You come to yellow card, you open your account uh, on the, on the you download on Play Store or on uh, the iOS app, you, you, you sign up, and you buy your cryptocurrency for 20 kwacha. Um, so we are making it as easy as possible, you know, to interact with uh, people of different incomes and uh, people of different backgrounds. It's also an, it's also an, um, an employment opportunity for local merchants as well as traders. So employment opportunity, obviously someone like me. Before this, I was unemployed. I used to hustle here and there, here and there. I have, um, you know, I have a degree but of course, the, the Zambian job market is quite uh, challenging. So we had to look beyond what, what is available. And um, you know, the exchange offered an opportunity, a new opportunity to bring in something that is quite controversial, but it is helpful um, as we understand it and as we decrypt it to uh, the masses. So there, there's so many opportunities you know, for, for, for people in the, in the market, as well as local traders uh, who are already in, into the crypto activity. But also it's also an, op an opportunity for our regulators to be able to draw data in terms of activity um, around cryptocurrency within, within the country, as well as taxation. Like I said, it's not regulated. It's not something that can easily be taxed. So how do you tax it? Of course, it's through an exchange like us. 
you slap a tax to all the transactions that we make, the government also makes money. So it's also an opportunity to draw uh, legal, um, um, to, to, to formulate uh, legal policies around cryptocurrency. Okay, so let's talk about scams because uh, that is quite common in, 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 um, in crypto. So um, scams are quite, are quite uh, you know, are quite common in the, in the crypto space. Uh, we have so many people who are self-proclaimed experts or trading experts, and they've built really fancy uh, uh, social media pages, uh, very attractive, and they would find people who are desperate to make quick cash, and they'll tell them, if you deposit 100 kwacha, you'll be able to make 10,000 US, uh, you'll be able to make 10,000 kwacha within seven days. And so people knowing that cryptocurrency shoots up, especially in those periods where cryptocurrency is like going higher and higher, we see a lot of scams. We see a lot of scam related activity uh, on the platform. People will be depositing really odd amounts. They'll deposit a thousand um, tomorrow, a thousand, and they're like, okay, why is this person continuously buying a thousand, a thousand? You call them and they tell you, oh no, someone told me um, if I deposit this much, I'll be able to get this much at the end of seven days. So it's been seven days and now my money has matured. I have a hundred thousand kwacha in an account and I need to pay money so that that money, I can get access to that money. So all those are lies, you know, they, it's, it's a Ponzi scheme. It's like deposit this and, and you get uh, this much. There's, there's a lot of similarity between network marketing and you know the scams that are happening in the market and just recently you know we just we just saw the the go like and all that um all those uh, kind of investments and that's how you spot like okay these these are definitely not um not genuine and africa obviously has not um has not been left out of this there are so many things there's the famous heritage coin within zambia that we know um uh there were there, there were uh, they were claiming to be a, a crypto investment as well as real estate investment when really there was nothing going on. There were so many pensioners that gave their money and whatnot, and then they just disappeared. So a lot of people lost out on money. And this is why there's a lot of skepticism around cryptocurrency uh, in Zambia. But hopefully, uh, you know, we as the young people of Zambia will definitely change this and, you know, drive towards um, a better adoption. There's also a lot of market manipulation. We see a lot of uh, um, a lot of um, a lot of large investors. Uh, you know, the Elon Musk, um, Jack Dorsey of Twitter. If these people uh, put out information out there that is negative uh, towards cryptocurrency, especially now that it's in, it's it's still in a, it's it's infancy stage. You know, we, we we who hold cryptocurrency are still some of the earliest adopters of cryptocurrency. So. When information is put out there saying, oh, okay, uh, it's bad for the environment, which it is something that we're going to address later on. Um, you know, it's bad for the environment, um, this and that, this and that. Obviously the price comes tumbling down. If he says, hey, Dogecoin is happening, we're going to the moon. You'll see Dogecoin coming from 0 0.5 uh, cents going up to $1. I mean, <laughs> there's so many people that made ridiculous amounts of money uh, a few months back with Dogecoin because of all the, the, the messaging that uh, Elon Musk was putting out. So there's a lot of that in the market. You know, there's also hacking. Uh, it's, 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 if, if you don't uh, safeguard your, 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 your wallets, um, like I will show you later on, there'll be a demo. Uh, if you don't safeguard your, your, your wallets, you definitely, uh, you, you can be a victim of hacking. People are very sophisticated these days. They can easily get into your account and wipe out your cryptocurrency. And then, like, like we mentioned, you know, it's a volatile asset. Easily goes up, easily goes down. So someone can be seeing crypto going up, 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 and they're like, oh, let me buy. I can get some money. And right at that point where you buy, it drops, and then you lose your money. And you come crying, hey, what is happening? When really it's uh, nothing that, that has to do with the company, but really... Um, you know, the market itself. So this is why we, we, we as Yellow Card are, 
really big on education. You really need to understand um, cryptocurrency before you get into it. Okay. All right, so let's look at regulation. I know this is something that will come up. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's important for us to just cover it. So BOZ has put out information that it's not legal tender. Like I mentioned, legal tender is only um, issued by a jurisdiction. Um, so cryptocurrency not issued by any jurisdiction. It was just created by a person or persons. So it's just a medium of exchange by people who agree and accept it. And it's not legal tender. <coughs> Sorry. And then the SEC, the SEC also put out a, pub, a public notice um, on this specific date where they noted that um, um, it's, 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 it's not an asset or it's, um, it's not a security under, under the, the policies of the Securities Act. Uh, so it does not meet those specifications. And as a result, they cannot issue licenses to people to give advice on uh, cryptocurrency investment and so there's there's a lot of um there's a lot of conflicting uh policies or messages out there <laughs> um so this is this is uh you know something that we, we 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 are currently working on um we've seen a bit of light at the end of the tunnel because uh both these uh regulators uh when we approach them uh, they, they informed us of the Sandbox application, uh, which is a framework that uh, guides policy formulation around uh, innovations that are not regulated uh, in different jurisdictions. So we will be given, we have to apply for, you know, to be part of this Sandbox uh, for a specific period of time. So it's one year where we'll be closely monitored by the Bank of Zambia and all our activity will be closely monitored we we'll have like a test group and all that. And then after one year, once the, once the government um, or, or the regulators, they see that this is something that is actually beneficial um, for, for the masses, then they get to determine whether policy should be formulated for um, um, the regulation of cryptocurrencies, as well as you know, talking about cryptocurrency as an investment. Uh, we've seen uh, policy adoption in, 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 in other African markets that we're in, in South Africa, for example. And, and we've seen also a ripple effect, uh, you know, what happens in South Africa steadily going to be adopted in other African countries or in the Sandic region and things like that. And we're hoping that, you know, um, that will be the same for, for, uh, for Zambia as well. So I'm just going to give you, I'm going to walk you through a demo real quick on how the Yellow Card uh, platform works. So, um, yeah, we are going to go to one of my accounts and then we can see how this works. Okay, so you like I, I mentioned earlier, you can um, you can sign up, uh, um, you can download an app on your phone, or you can um, you can use the website. I actually have a promo code for you. So while I am doing this, I will give you the promo code, um, and then you can get yourself fifty kwacha worth of Bitcoin. So this is for free, this is for new signups. If you have the yellow card account, unfortunately, unless you open a new account, you won't have access to this 50 quarter. So you have to hit on sign up and then you enter your details. So like you can see my details are already there. So you enter your details and then um, is uh, a referral code. So here you see where it says got an invite code. It's written referral code. So here, what you will input is, let me just get it real quick. Um, uh, where is it? Okay, got it. So the new code is in capital letters, YC 
ZMK. So just, just input YC ZMK. I'm going to put it in the chat box so that everyone can have access. And then I can go ahead and um, I can go ahead and uh, uh, everyone in the meeting I can go ahead and do the demo. Yeah. All right. So YC ZMK and then hit sign up. So once you do that, you will have um, you will have a BTC quacha with a BTC. So I will use this account. Okay, so you see, like I, I mentioned earlier that you need to protect yourself. There's what is known as 2FA. So this 2FA, you can download it as an app or it can be sent to your phone um, directly via text. Um, and that's what you import here. So that way no one will ever have access uh, to your account. Of course, you have to, um, you have to um, switch this on in the app once you log in and all that. Um, and you do your sign up and then there's a security option. You have to activate 2FA or you activate the verification code. So that will always keep your account safe. So for me, um, okay, zero one, two, nine, four, eight, four. So that's my 2FA. Don't worry, if you see this 2FA, it's okay because this is a one-time pin once it goes away or once i enter it then no one can have access to my account besides you didn't even see my password so it's fine so yeah so you can see that i have zero kwacha in here this is my yellow card account as you can see it it has my name it has the option to buy i can invite someone and in i can sell cryptocurrency i can also increase my limit so increasing your limits, you have to offer us personal documentation or we'll be able to identify you as well as identify your sources of income so that uh, you know, we, we are not in conflict with the Bank of Zambia saying, hey, this person is buying Bitcoin for 40,000 US dollars a day, what's happening? So um, if you want to buy Bitcoin, what you do is you hit on deposit, you select the bank transfer option, and then you enter how much you want to deposit. So I will say 100 kwacha here, view and confirm. And then I will confirm right here. Like this gives me, so this gives me all the information or the data of the bank, um, the banking information of yellow card. This is what I will use to deposit that 100 kwacha. So this is simply a notification that I'm sending to the system, the yellow card system notifying them that I want to buy cryptocurrency. So it's only, uh, it's, it's zero, you don't have to pay anything. It's free for you to deposit, like you can see here. So I will hit confirm. Once I do that, okay. Once I do that, when I go to, when I go to my homepage, you can see there's a hundred kwacha pending here. So once I deposit the hundred kwacha, which I will, but for now, I'm going to ask someone to credit me um, on my yellow card system. And then you see the 100 kwacha will pop in my account. So, okay. Yeah, it's popped in my account. And then the beauty is that when you make, um, when you make a when you make a when you make a deposit request when you make a deposit request you also get a notification in your in your email uh, notifying you that you have made a deposit request so you are able to track the activity of your account so i have asked someone to credit me just now And I will show you once it is done. So I hope you've been able to download your, your, um, your app and included that YC, um, what is the code again? 
YC, we will improve on deposits for sure. YCZMK. So for first time users, please. For first time users, YCZMK. It will give you 50 kwacha worth of Bitcoin. As we are waiting. I know we are running out of time. Um, I don't know if, if I should go on. I will ask the moderator, should I just go on or we can wait uh, a few more minutes? Uh, I believe we could go on since we had promised a one hour, 30 minutes to the audience and the participants. Okay, all right. So yeah, so once, once the 100 kwacha is approved, um, then it will move from here to here. And then once it hits here, it will be 100 kwacha. And then you can just go on Bitcoin here, you buy, you select buy, and then you enter your 100 kwacha here. So like you can see, I don't have a sufficient balance. So it will even show you, this is how much you get in Bitcoin for 100 kwacha. And then you hit here, review and confirm. Once you have that 100 kwacha, and you'll be able to buy your Bitcoin and then you have Bitcoin. So you can see for one USD, you get 19.94 worth of Bitcoin. Okay. All right. So I'll just quickly go back to, um, I'll go back to, okay. Someone has actually, yeah, it's in my account. So you can see I have a hundred kwacha right there. So I go here on buy the Bitcoin. And then I hit 100, I review and confirm, pay. I don't think I remember my uh, user is banned. Okay, I need to revisit this. Okay, yeah, so once you do that, you enter the, the, the 100 kwacha, review and confirm, and then the 100 kwacha will be in your wallet. So I'll just go back to just do this. And then uh, present. Okay, yeah. So it's as easy as that. There is really no, um, no, uh, no hassle. Uh, yeah, that is all I had for you. So if you want to find out more about Cello Card, please. We have we have an academy. Um, you know, we have this knowledge base. And if you want to get in touch with us, please reach out to our support team and. Uh, you can always, they can always find ways and means to get you to us. Yeah. Um, I will hand over to the moderator to control how this goes next. Thank you for that, Karen and Namakando for that awesome presentation. My mind is blown at the moment. Let me just put my camera in steady mode. Okay. Okay, so uh, I, I hope I'm, I'm clear. Yes, you are. Okay, thank you for that, Karin. And Amakando, that presentation was awesome. My mind is still blown up. I'm like, all this is happening actually. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> and by the way, before we even move on, did I even mention my name? I'm Tevin Smart, in case people didn't get it. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to invite my co-host, David Chisha, to take us through the next segment of this. And thank you for being patient to all our listeners and audience. I know we promised one hour, 30 minutes, and we're four minutes left, but we're asking just for a bit of your time as we go through the Q&A and some of the activities that might come. So David, may you please take it away? Um, all right, thank you very much, Devin Smart. Um, good afternoon once again, I hope we're good. Um, thank you so much, Karen and Namakando for the presentation. That was definitely some food for thought. Um, it was definitely a pleasure learning about blockchain and cryptocurrency. And one thing I know for sure is that what we learn with pleasure, we never forget. Yeah, 
So now, um, right about now, we shall go into our Q&A session. So um, for all those who would like to ask their questions using their mic, you may please just raise your hand. But for the meantime, we'll tackle the questions that we have in the inbox. So um, our first question, um, we had the first question that came from, okay. Let me just talk about the first question that we had. Okay, so we'll start with Frank. He says, um, can there be a better way of depositing money in yellow card account? Money is taking too long to reflect. And for me, the bank transfer method set up by your system is not even supported. If I try to use that money is not debited from my bank account and I will wait until nothing. The first time I tried to deposit, I just went to my bank and deposited the money. Yeah, so that's the question from Frank. I don't know how you would respond to it, Karen. Yes, 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 uh, for sure. Um, the reason why we don't have uh, um, multiple ways of, of loading and offloading your accounts is because of you know the, the strict regulation. But we are definitely trying to work with international money providers who are within Zambia. Um, and they have integrated with some of like the mobile money providers. Um, that way, when we plug into their system, then it doesn't get to affect um, you know, the Zambian setting in any way. So that's, that's what we're working on right now. Um, I think uh, you are right, uh, it takes a while especially like I mentioned bank transfers, it can take even up to like three days for your money to reflect and some banks don't even send to us at all. So yes, we, we are definitely working on that and we are hoping you know soon people will have an easy way to load cash and um, offload cash. Okay, thank you very much, Karen. So um, just the thing, um, so apparently I got logged out. So there are questions that came before uh, Karen sent the code. So by any chance, if you posted your question before that, kindly resend it. Yeah, so um, this question comes from Taonga. Um, what is the minimum size or amount of Bitcoin one can purchase or TC? Oh, what's the minimum via OTC? Okay, so via OTC, the minimum that can be purchased is uh, 5,000 US dollars. But if it's on the platform, now OTC is, is I, don't want, I don't want people to get confused here and raise their eyebrows. OTC is reserved for high net individuals. Uh, these are people who usually buy Bitcoin, like crazy amounts, really large amounts. Uh, but we have the platform, like I mentioned, on the platform, you can buy for as low as 20 kwacha. So the people that are rich and have got money, they can buy via OTC for 5,000 US dollars and above. For people like me, please let's utilize the platform. We buy 20 kwacha and see how it works. Okay, thank you very much, Karen. I hope um, Tawanga, your question has been answered. So um, we'll go to our next question coming from Usonda. Um, and she says, do you issue Bitcoin accounts and where are you located? We do have wallets. Uh, we, we, we have um, like custodial wallets that we make available to our users. So you just download uh, the Yellow Card app, or if you don't have a phone that can download, you can go on the internet, www.yellowcard.io, set up an account, um, and then you, you will have, you instantly have uh, a Yellow Card, you have instantly have a Bitcoin wallet where you can uh, store, uh, purchase your crypto, we are located at Bongo Hive. If uh, you know you are interested in coming to meet us directly, uh, but of course uh, we are working remotely. So if you want to meet me at Bongo Hive, you have to get in touch with our support, and then we find ways to see. Um, you know, I can always make time to come and meet you at Bongo Hive. Okay. Um, so thank you very much. Before we go to our next question, um, so we have. Um, Daniel Simwaba would like to address a brief cryptocurrency concern with money laundering, accusation and crypto. Yeah, I don't know if this has been looked on. Hello? Yeah. Yes? <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry, I just wanted to 
maybe clarify on the issues of the accusations that Bitcoin uh, gets when it comes to money laundering and illicit uh, activities in the financial system. For me, I come in a world that everyone obviously would understand money uh, numbers don't lie. So if you look at the numbers, according to the United Nations, they estimated last year that 5% to 2% to 5% of global GDP was being laundered with the traditional financial system, right? So we're talking of approximately two to five trillion US dollars globally being uh, uh, channeled through illicit, uh, illicit uh, means through drug trafficking and stuff like that. But the Bitcoin market cap is only 700 billion US dollars, not trillion, 700 billion US dollars. And the total uh, crypto market cap is 1.5 uh, trillion US dollars. So if, if you do the, the numberings right, that's less than, uh, w uh, that's less than the two to 5% global GDP, which is uh, two, uh, 2 trillion to 5 trillion, right? So if you look at now uh, what's being money laundered according to the report, right, is 1% of the total cryptocurrency market cap. So we're talking of, um, that's approximately the 1%, what's 1% 1 of uh, 750? That's less than 1 trillion, that's less than 1 billion US dollars. In fact, that's less than 5 billion US dollars. But according to the United Nations, we're seeing a volume of 2 trillion to 5 trillion US dollars being money laundered. So who's or where is a system channeling more funds that are related to illicit behavior? So, traditional financial system more than the crypto infrastructure according to how it, 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 it has come out. So I don't know if people feel my, my calculations uh, are wrong. Uh, I think we have to debate around these accusations that point to Bitcoin. Yeah, there's 1.1 1, uh, 1 .1 trillion, but that's less than a bi that's less than 2 billion being channeled in illicit behavior because we're looking at 1.1% of the whole tri um, cryptocurrency market cap, which is approximately 1.5 trillion. And money laundering is, is between 2 trillion to 5 trillion US dollars. So if, even if we say all, uh, all the cryptocurrency being channeled is money laundering, it doesn't still amount to the amount of uh, money we're talking about. So maybe that accusation should be something that uh, people should look into and try and see that um, I don't think cryptocurrency, the blend that cryptocurrency is getting, should they should get it. I think the financial, uh, traditional financial system should get some of that blend because some of the political, uh, I think, uh, uh, activities that happened in the US with a certain bank, I think you'll find this on Forbes, where money was channeled, then the, uh, the government was trying to uh, uh, investigate one of these banks, I might not mention, but uh, that went to a dead end. So I think that's what I wanted to just mention. Then. That's it. Thanks. All right. Thank, thank you so much, Daniel, for that lovely word of answer. So um, we'll move further to our next question. Um, it says, is crypto taxed in Zambia? Yeah. No, it's not. There's no framework to uh, tax cryptocurrency in Zambia. Uh, but um, we pay uh, like income tax. I mean, we pay um, pay as you earn. We pay, you know, the, 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 the taxes that are associated with salary and things like that. Those ones we are mandated uh, to pay. So we definitely do pay as a company. All right, lovely. Thank you very much. So um, our second last question, um, how does cryptocurrency accumulate perhaps um, attributionist? Is there a rate at which it grows? Um, I would ask Namakando to answer this question. Namakando? Uh, could you just repeat the question one more time? Um, the question says, how does cryptocurrency accumulate? Is there 
a rate at which it grows. Okay, um, there's no fixed rate of growth. So um, crypto is, uh, is volatile. It's based on supply demand basis. And so it, it, it just goes with uh, its availability. Like for now, we, we could say um, a crypto, a well-known crypto like Bitcoin, since its inception up to date, it has always been increasing in value. Because as you have seen, for instance, there's only 21 billion that are going to be mined. So it's a limited resource. And so this will mean demand will be high very soon because you're using money to buy Bitcoin. And then the supply of Bitcoin is going to be very, uh, very limited. So it will obviously go high in value. But uh, these, these cryptocurrencies tend to be volatile because of, uh, of adoption per se. So right now there's a lot of skepticism, like, you know, people are afraid. So if you buy, you see, if you wake up uh, today, market sentiments like Elon Musk made a declaration to start selling Tesla in Bitcoin. So that means it was being adopted to buy a huge commodity. And so people started seeing the value in Bitcoin. The moment Elon Musk pulled out, uh, people started getting skeptical, say, okay, what are we going to purchase with Bitcoin? So it always depends. But over time, the value of, uh, of crypto is going to go high, as you all see. Like, let's just base it on money being digital nowadays, right? Like very soon. I mean, even your own money. Is, I don't know, some of you who are earning money, you do mobile money, Airtel to Zamtel, all, all these things. This is all electronic. And so crypto is just going to take over. It's going to be, money is going to be fully digital. So. I would suggest you invest in cryptocurrency, do some research, because value is obviously going to go high. That's what I would say for now. All right. Thank you so much, Namakando. So um, due to time, I will, I will fuse um, the last two questions that we have. So the first one is in relation to the slides. Leandro says, will these slides be shared? Then the last question comes from Zandu. Um, he says, a central bank digital currency is going to render cryptocurrency useless. Okay, so first, first of all, the slides have already been shared with um, uh, the team that put up this, uh, this program, the webinar. So I'm sure they will be able to uh, reshare it once, uh, once, uh, once, once, once this webinar is done. And then uh, on cryptocurrency, the central bank, the, the, the digital currencies that are being developed or created by central banks. Um, I think if you followed us really closely, we mentioned on how uh, the whole idea of creating a cryptocurrency uh, was to decentralize um, uh, power when it comes to finances and how they are controlled. And so people love love the idea of being in control of their own finances. And there are many more other uh, favorable uh, uses that are coming up when it comes to cryptocurrencies as well as blockchain in itself. So we don't see uh, people going more towards uh, central bank digital currencies. I'll give you an example of China, Nigeria. Nigeria uh, you know, recently declared or, uh, uh, that they are uh, they created their own digital currency or they want to create their own digital currency and they banned the use of uh, Bitcoin in their, in their country. But irregardless of the ban, Nigeria still is one of the largest consuming cryptocurrency economies in Africa. You can imagine something is banned, but they're still moving over 40 million US dollars a month in cryptocurrency. So I don't think, um, I don't think it will render it useless. If anything, we are more likely to see a lack of use of the bank digital currencies and more use of the cryptocurrencies, um, the decentralized digital currencies. Okay, thank you so much, Karen. So yeah, I, I said that as our last question, but we have just one last question. Yeah, this will be the last question we will end. Um, is it possible to buy Bitcoin using some other crypto? Yes, 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 it definitely is. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so we have officially come to the end of our Q&A.
I hope everyone has learned a thing or two because we have all engaged ourselves in the session. Yeah, so I'd like to hand over to Terry Smart to conclude the meeting for us. Hello, uh, thank you for that, David. That Q and A for that Q and A, and on the agenda, uh, let me just confirm with uh with Aaron. Uh, do we still have the giveaways as part of the session? Oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Then let me uh leave it to Aaron to take it away with us for the giveaways. Aaron, you can take the stand. All right. Um, Karen, how are we going to do it? Okay. Um, so real quick, I think I'll just answer a question here. How do you open an account um, through yellow card if someone is abroad? So if you are in a country that supports yellow card uh, in Africa, you can you can just look it up and 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 download and you know start uh, buying and selling the Bitcoin within that same specific country. And then when it comes to um, the giveaway, I am going to ask questions. And the first person to answer that question in the chat box, uh, you get to win. We have ten yellow card T-shirts. Uh, is Bitcoin inflation proof? It 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 somewhat is. I'm I'm supposed to stop answering the question. It somewhat is. It's it's deflationary actually. If if you if you understood the part where Namakando was talking about the halving and how it's getting difficult to mine Bitcoin, uh, so it's it's more so deflationary than um, inflationary. Um, so I'm going to ask questions and then if you post a question in the chat, I mean you post your answer in the chat, um, you will be you can win some. Um, you can win some Bitcoin. I mean, you can win some yellow card T-shirts. We have 10 T-shirts that we're giving away. We also have some wristbands. And um, we, we've already given away the, the, the BTC. I hope you have all at least uh, already redeemed your 50 quacha worth of Bitcoin. Um, and you can just watch the trains, how it goes up and down uh, before you actually put in your own money. So my first question is, um, how many Bitcoin will there ever be in supply? Oh, that was fast. Cedric, Cedric got that 21 million. David had that one. <laughs> okay. All right. That is interesting. How many countries is yellow card in? Okay. Okay. Okay, anyone else want to guess? Good, 11. Just share your email address and then I'll also ask Cedric and um, let's see who else answered 21 million and David to just share their, uh, their email addresses. I think uh, our, our uh, moderator should be able to take note of that and then we'll, we will have this um, sent to you. Um, another question is, uh, Namakando, do you want to give one question? Namakando, are you there? Oh, yes. Um, well, okay, yeah, let me give you know, this, this is a room full of intellectuals. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, so guys, okay, this question was actually supposed to be answered by me, so I'm going to throw it to the audience, right? So can someone, uh, after what we've explained, you know, how the blockchain works, can someone give me any other application that we could use with the blockchain? Anything? Except for, except for cryptocurrency. Daniel, I'm not going to consider that because Daniel is one of us. So we are going to ask for another use case. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Digital marketplace. Okay, there are NFTs. Uh, okay. 
All right. Uh, anyone else want to try? Must yes, the Chris. Let's see. Okay. Keep okay, on going. Give, can can I give a hint, guys? Um. So we are we are we are in an election period. You know, I I think this one I'll even invite someone to elaborate if there's time. Like if you can answer how we can apply it in with in in regards to elections. You know, it could be an interesting thing. <laughs> we need an elaboration. <laughs> Don't just say we voting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Well, uh, Bitcoin can, uh, I mean, the blockchain technology can be used to, people can vote on the blockchain. And, um, you know, it can be an open uh, database where people can check in real time. Um, the numbers as well as the voting process and it's so easy that we actually don't have to like have to count the votes it it's all automatically uploaded on the on the blockchain and once everyone logs in um you know their vote it's calculates and we can see who's the winner of uh that particular election all right so there's so many other you know there's so many other in the healthcare in the healthcare system it can also be used um for 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 storing of data land titling as our, as 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 um as daniel has already mentioned so there are many there are so many use cases of blockchain technology and this is why you know uh, one aspect is us advocating for the use or for the adoption of um blockchain amongst the young people uh to see the different ways that um you can apply this to some of the problems that your community is facing. And blockchain is actually a hot cake in terms of um, jobs right now. So I know we are we have students here. Some of you are will be done with uni soon. You'll be looking for jobs. So, you know, take up a, a class or two um, on Coursera or anything like that that talks about blockchain and understand what it is. There are so many jobs uh, in, in the blockchain space and who knows, you might be uh, our Zambian Elon Musk. Okay, uh, I have a question. Um, okay. Let's see. Yes, the last question. Uh, who created Bitcoin? Ooh, Satoshi Nakamoto. Goodness, Cedric is on fire. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Give us your uh give us your 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 names. Um I'm sure Aaron will find a way to get these people and you know some of the first few responses that we had, we can always uh, send them some match. Um yeah, and then you can, you know, you can um you can look so good in your match and tag us uh, yellow card app Zambia. So uh, there was a question on, can someone intern at Yellow Card? Of course you can intern at Yellow Card, uh, but something that is open right now is the ambassadors program. Uh, we are running an ambassadors program where we get to train young people on blockchain technology. It's actually certified. You can get certified as um, um, someone who's taken a blockchain, you understand how it works. And then we, we, we let you be our representative in the community. Um, and then you have to develop or design um, small engagements with the communities and teach them about cryptocurrency, teach them about blockchain. Uh, you know, if we see that it's definitely a, a worthwhile idea, we do put money into it and then you can hold your event. Um, in some countries like Ghana, we've had someone who's been like, hey, I, I want to hold um, a, a party for, for, for Bitcoin. And he brought in really good people and we were able to give him money and he threw a party and things like that. But of course, this is not like I'm telling you to come and party. We want real, real, um, you know, we, we want people who come up with concrete ideas and we're able to see that, okay, yeah, definitely there'll be something um, 
there will be something worthwhile that will come through that channel that we decide to direct funds. So yeah, uh, there are plenty of opportunities in the, in the yellow card space. Um, not only that, there's also the referral program that I showed you. Uh, you know, just tell someone to sign up using your code and you can get a small amount of money. Um, yeah, if, if you share with so many people, it grows over time. And imagine you get like, uh, you get two kwacha from one person and you get two kwacha from another person. You say 10 people use your code and then you decide to use those two kwachas and buy Bitcoin and it accumulates over time. You get a bit of some money. So um, it's, it's, it's a really good incentive, but for, for young people, you know, uh, be open, uh, look into the blockchain space and, um, there's so many opportunities in the in the in the in the crypto industry as well as as the blockchain space. It doesn't have to be you don't have to strictly like blockchain. I know people who um, like blockchain and they don't like cryptocurrencies, and it that 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 is fine. So um, yeah, uh, we're hoping to see more and more of you engaged in 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 the blockchain and crypto space. Um, okay, so. Um... For all those who will be having questions to ask, um, we would kindly ask that you send your questions in the group so that we can, such can get a quick response because we're running out of time. Thank you. Over to you. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, that giveaway was amazing for those who managed to answer and everything. And thank you, Chisha, for that quite good Q&A. And thank you, Karen and the Yellow Card app for taking time to really come through and educate us on uh, uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain. And also thank you to the pest setters and Unza Baker for organizing this all event. I'm not sure if the partners, the University of Lusaka Business Association or Economica for CBU or Computer Society for UNSA have got anything to say before we get to close the session. Oh, it seems there's no one available at the moment. So we just want to thank everyone for literally coming through for sparing even 30 minutes more of your time than we had anticipated. So thank you very much for doing that. And by the way, uh, for those who want to join the Nzabeka group, Aaron has just sent a link in the group. You can... And you are educated on cryptocurrency. And don't forget to also visit the Yellow Card um, website to get more information on Bitcoin and everything that you need to know when it comes to cryptocurrency. So I just want to thank everyone once more. And don't forget, always keep the golden rules. COVID is real. Keep yourself safe. And I hope you enjoyed this session and would like to get feedback from you both as the Pesetas Magazine and Unza Beikai with our partners. So thank you very much to everyone who joined. And this is a wrap for us from me and the organizers want to say bye and see you next time on our next webinar. Thank you. <laughs>